Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over acute transplant rejection and discuss how the donor dendritic cell is able to activate the recipient's immune system. Okay, so let's begin. On the top right, I've drawn a cartoon of a 20 amino acid uh, protein. The black dots and lines represent the backbone of the protein, while the blue lines and the orange lines represent the residues coming off of the amino acids. On the bottom left, there's an antigen presenting cell. It has its MHC molecule. These black regions here represent the anchor residue binding locations. And then the uh, cell drawn above is a T cell with its T cell receptor. And then down in the middle here is just a blank cell for right now with an MHC molecule. You can just ignore this for now. I want to begin by discussing how peptide fragments are made and then loaded into MHC because that's the key for how an acute reaction arises. Okay, so natively our proteins are broken down by the proteasome into random fragments. And fragments that are eight to 10 amino acids long can then be loaded uh, in the endoplasmic reticulum onto MHC class one and presented by all nucleated cells. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this 20 amino acid protein and I've broken it down into four potential fragments. And you can see these four potential fragments match up with bits of that 20 amino acid cartoon that I have. Okay, and so in our body, the only fragments that actually get loaded onto the MHC are those that match the binding sites of the MHC molecule. So in this example, the protein that will get loaded onto the MHC, I'm going to denote with a star, and it's actually this bottom fragment. The bottom fragment has these two, has one and two anchor residues that match the two anchor residues over on the MHC. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this residue or this uh, peptide fragment in so that hopefully it's a little bit more clear what I'm talking about with these anchor residues. Okay, so the anchor residues are going to go in and bind in those anchor clefts. And then the blue residues are actually going to be presented in the opposite direction. And those are going to be what the T cells will see and be looking out for. Okay, so in the body, if we say this is a self peptide, then let's move to the thymus because that's where self peptides are first presented to T cells. In the thymus, our T cells are educated based off of our native MHC molecules. There's a protein called AIR, A-I-R-E, that actually expresses many of the self peptides that could be found in the body. So the thymus is there in negative selection to make sure that our T cells are not autoreactive. So we have a self peptide. So here, if we say that this is a self peptide, then this self-peptide in the thymus will be broken down into its fragments, denoted here. The fragment that fits in our MHC molecule here with the star gets loaded into the MHC and presented to the T cells. And then in the thymus, if there's a T cell that reacts with this, or that binds tightly, this T cell will undergo apoptosis. And that is what prevents our periphery from having autoreactive T cells. Okay, this is just the negative selection in the thymus. But it's important to recognize that it's based off of the peptide fragments that are cleaved from all the cell proteins and only those that fit in the MHC binding cleft will be presented as self peptides to the T cells in negative selection. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens when we have some sort of an organ donation. In a donation paradigm, the donor likely has polymorphisms in their MHC molecule. So here, I'm going to denote this as a donor uh, dendritic cell, okay? And we're gonna say that this donor dendritic cell has a polymorphism so that its binding sites 
are actually going to be here. So there's going to be one, two, and three binding sites. And so as a result, if we look back at the peptide fragments we have, what we'll see is that the one that bound to the um, recipient's APC, in other words, the one that bound over here, is this bottom one, but if we look at our protein, our peptide fragments here, what we see is it's actually a different peptide that's going to bind with the dendritic cell that comes now from the donor. We're going to see that the donor actually will allow binding for this fragment. It's really important because this fragment was not present in the thymus, but it came from the same protein. So this fragment will get loaded into the donor's MHC. We'll denote this here with our little cartoon. The anchor residues will enter their um, binding sites. And now what we're going to have presented to the T cell is actually a different arrangement of blue, in this case, blue uh, residues. So we can see that from the same 20 amino acid protein, we got a different profile presented in the donor dendritic cell than we did in the recipient's antigen, present, antigen presenting cell, which means that the T cells that are in the thymus were selected against this fragment, but were not selected against the donor's fragment. So now there's T cells in the periphery that can come in and bind there's T cells in the periphery that can come in and bind to the donor's MHC. When that happens, because the transplant is going to be inflamed and the donor dendritic cell is going to be expressing the co-receptor, what happens when that T cell comes in is it gets activated. And then that T cell moves back to the donor tissue and actually can react with the donor tissue. And this is problematic because it very rapidly depletes any uh, cells within the donor tissue and will kill that tissue. So the key to this is really that the recipient has a different MHC profile than the donor. And as a result, their self-peptide was presented in a different way than it was during negative selection. Now, this becomes a big problem because in this example, I've used a 20 amino acid protein, but in our cells we have proteins that are much larger than this, and most cells express like 10,000 proteins, which means that for each one of those proteins they were presented different in the thymus and then they will be on that donor dendritic cell. So there's that many 10,000 opportunities to find a T cell. This is why the reaction is so robust and so rapid because you're not just talking about one pathogen presenting one peptide fragment. You're talking about every self peptide looking like a pathogenic peptide to the T cells because they weren't selected for them. And so what you get is the donor looks like a completely foreign entity. And so you mount an immune response against the donor. So hopefully this clarified how the antigen presenting cells in the recipient have a different profile of peptides that they express than the MHC used by the donor. This is exactly why we try and match MHC when we can. So with that, this concludes the acute transplant rejection. Hopefully this was helpful, and I wish you all the best with your studying.